But the Buddha said, uh, sensual pleasures, there is this danger, folly and depravity of sensual pleasures. What is the danger? The danger is that indulging in sensual pleasures uh, leads to a greater craving for them. Uh, it's just like fanning the flames of desire. Another danger is that it is not permanently available and it will end uh, when one's blessings uh, as a deva is used up. Uh, that is the danger of uh, sensual pleasures. Now, the folly or vanity of uh, sensual pleasures uh, is that the desires cannot be satisfied. And sorrowful planes of rebirth uh, await one uh, whose blessings are used up. So as we, as a person, uh, as a deva enjoys, or a devi enjoys life in the heavens, uh, he or she uh, is using up the blessings, you know, accumulated from past life. As we enjoy life, we are using up our blessings bank. Uh. So one day when all the blessings are used up, uh, and we don't have that karma of enjoying life as a deva, we will fall down. And lower planes of rebirth await us. Uh. Now the depravity of sensual desires uh, is that it is a sickness, it is a disease, uh, which few people uh, understand. Uh. And the Buddha, to make us understand how sensual desires uh, is a sickness or a disease, gave the parable of a leper in the Magandya Sutta, in the Majjhima Nikaya. The Buddha said, there is a leper, there's a certain man is a leper, and because he's a leper, the skin, uh, the, the flesh uh, is rotting. And this uh, rotting flesh, uh, is very itchy, so that he has to scratch himself. And as he scratches his uh, flesh, uh, the blood comes out uh, because the flesh is rotting. And the more he scratches, the more the blood comes out, and then it turns to pus. Uh. And the more he scratches, more pus forms and more foul smelling it becomes uh, as the flesh is rotting. And he doesn't uh, see it as painful. Why? Because the itch is so terrible, so deep-rooted. Uh, it's itching him right to the bones uh, so that he has to scratch and scratch and scratch until it's all bloody. And even then, uh, that itch cannot be satisfied. So what does he do? He goes to find some burning ember, some charcoal, and the flame has, has, there's no more flame. Nah. And he uses that charcoal nah, to burn his flesh, cauterize his flesh. Nah. So as he burns his flesh, nah, that itchy flesh, nah, he gets some relief nah, from that terrible itch. And then he's satisfied for a while. But after some time, nah, that itch comes back again. And he can't stand it, he has to scratch again. And, and if that scratching is not sufficient, he has to find some burning ember again, uh, some ember to burn that flesh again. Uh, because that's, that, that itch uh, goes deep into his bones. Uh, uh. So as he does this every day, uh, scratching and burning, uh, the more bloody the flesh becomes more pus forms, more foul smelling it becomes, and the condition deteriorates. Now the Buddha said, suppose a normal person were to do the same thing, scratch himself until the blood comes out, or take an ember and burn him his, his flesh, would not that be painful? Definitely that would be painful, right? But why, <coughs> why doesn't the leper recognize it as pain, because he's diseased, he's sick. That's why he doesn't recognize it as pain, he recognizes it as a kind of satisfaction. So in the same way, the Buddha said, nah, all living beings nah, are, are burned by the flames of desire. And because we want to satisfy these sensual desires, nah, uh, we do things, uh, all kinds of things, uh, to satisfy our sensual desires and undergo, we undergo a lot of pain and suffering, uh, but we don't recognize it. 
as pain and suffering because we are just like that leper. We are a slave of our passions. Right? You find sometimes a man already with a family, responsible person with children, wife, etc. Well, he'll go out of his way to carry on an affair. Why? Because he's burned by these uh, flames of desire. He's sick, just like the leper is sick. And he has to satisfy the itch, just like the leper has to satisfy the itch. So he does all these kinds of things, going out in the middle of the night, hiding himself and all these ways to satisfy the flames of desire. And so you can see how this parable of the leper is so accurate, so spot on. And so that is uh, the simile eh, to show how living beings are diseased. Eh? So existence eh, for all of us eh, is a long struggle eh, to satisfy our desires from the moment we are born until we die. You see, like a child, then the simple desires for a child would be to satisfy the hunger, right? Uh, hunger is one of those... Uh, um, sense uh, uh, a sickness of uh, you could, can call it a, a kind of sickness uh, that we have to satisfy uh. and then when a person is an adult he has to satisfy the sex urge then he has to find a dwelling place to live comfortably and then um, the normal things, la, we clothes and all that, na, for our material comfort. Na, yeah. And then from basic uh, things like this, eh, then later, eh, after we have satisfied these basic things, eh, then we indulge in, instead of just trying to satisfy our hunger, we look for good food, na, rich food. Na, and then instead of just having... Uh, Mm-hmm. marriage partner, instead of just having one spouse, we look for extra marital relationships, affairs, and then instead of just living in a simple uh, house, uh, people, when they can afford it, they look for a luxurious apartment, luxurious bungalow, hi-fi equipment, Mercedes Benz, uh, go on holiday, overseas, uh, etc. All these uh, to satisfy our desires. Na? And so life is like this. Na? Na? One long struggle na? to satisfy our desires. And in the process of wanting to satisfy our desires, na? we labor and toil. Na? In the olden days, na? people would toil in the paddy fields, in the orchards, in the forests, etc. And nowadays, people toil in the office buildings, in the concrete jungles. Na? Na? Nowadays, people use their mind to plan and scheme, compete with each other. In the process, man undergoes a lot of hardship. Sometimes he has to take risks, sometimes even risks to his life. Sometimes in certain professions, for example, a soldier or even an electrician working to get a living every day is... Touching these wires sometimes, uh, he might touch a live wire and then his life will just end. uh. And all this uh, for the self, because of the ego, uh, we have the self. And this self uh, is not only this body, all those that we associate with the self, uh, for example, my husband, my wife, my children, my parents, uh, all this mine, uh, uh, I and mine, uh, that is the extension of the self. And then in our endeavors, uh, sometimes we fail and we grieve and sorrow. uh. For example, if a person is a farmer, sometimes floods occur or drought uh, and then uh, his crops are wiped out uh, and then he'll cry and weep and beat his chest. uh. Or sometimes, like nowadays, People do business and the business fails and it becomes a bankrupt. And also he 
wails and cries and beat his chest. Just like uh, you all know at the moment there is a recession. I was just mentioning in the car that nowadays a lot of people go to the temple and cry. Much more than before. Sometimes people break down and the family comes uh, to a monk and see how a monk can help this person who's had a breakdown. Uh, and uh, because of wanting to satisfy our desires, uh, quarrels occur and fights and sometimes even wars uh, between nations uh, due to greed. Uh, for example, during the Second World War, because of the greed of one man, Adolf Hitler, we had the Second World War. And in the Second World War, 36 million people were killed. 36 million people were killed in this one world war. Nowadays, if you have a world war, it will be much more because of nuclear weapons. Eh? And also because of the impermanent nature of life, eh? we suffer eh? in various ways. Eh? When we are separated from our beloved ones, or when our beloved ones pass away, or when we ourselves become sick, or we become old, age, or we die ourselves. Many, many ways you know, we suffer, but uh, I won't go into details because afterwards when I go into the first noble truth, Dukkha, I'll explain that in more detail. So life uh, is a struggle of existence uh, from lifetime to lifetime to satisfy our desires, uh, which can never be satisfied. Uh. Just like the leper, his itch, uh, as long as he's sick, uh, can never go away. Uh. He can only go away for a short while. Later, very soon, he'll come back again. So, in the same way, because of our Nature, uh, our nature is such uh, that we can never be content, you know. We can never be contented. We can never be satisfied. Why? Because the mind is always active. Uh, you can only be satisfied for a short while. Later, you have other desires again. So, we continue to suffer. Uh, and most beings uh, die unsatisfied. Uh, with their ambition, ambitions are uh, not completely fulfilled. Uh, and because of that, uh, we, because of being unsatisfied, we take rebirth again to, feel, to fulfill the unfulfilled desires. According to the Buddha, there are some heavenly beings uh, whose lifespan is millions and millions of years. And when they are about to pass away, they still have so many things they want to do. And they still want to carry out and they still want to achieve these things. And because of this uh, unsatisfied desires, they take rebirth again. So every lifetime we come, uh, we have our share of suffering uh, and lessons to be learned from life. Uh. And if we learn, uh, we progress uh, spiritually. If we fail, uh, we take rebirth in a lower plane. Uh, to suffer, for example, as a ghost, as an animal, in hell, to learn our lesson. Uh, so, life after life, uh, we suffer.